Okay, everyone, welcome back to Alice's Warped Reality, was it? I can't remember. I'm coming right off on the other one. Plus, it's kind of, plus it kind of hurts. We just met the hedgehog. I'm so lucky. It's the bestest thing that I got to meet Alice. Oh, wow, well, wow, well, wow, well, wow. Well. I only heard the rumors. I'm young, so I haven't met Alice. The master said I'd probably never have the chance to meet you. But I always dreamed that one day I would be definitely... Then the hedgehog became silent again. Hee <laughs> hee. Did you just laugh? Huh? Nah, it's nothing. Really? I could have sworn I heard a disturbing laugh. Hey Alice, please come to our shop. The hedgehog squeezed my arms. Your shop? My master is a tailor. Please come visit. I want to share you with him too. What do you mean, share me? But the hedgehog was too excited to hear me. And you need some clothes, don't you? We carry Alice's clothes in our shop. Alice's clothes? Come, come, I'll support you. It's just right over there. Whoa. The hedgehog pulled me with extraordinary strength. I was basically dragged to my feet. But I don't have any money. We don't need any money. Money's not good to us. Money, money's not good to us. Hedgehog noise twitched and a joyous expression appeared on his face for some reason. I think they're going to try to eat me. Led by the hedgehog, I made my way to the first floor. I went down the stairs with no small effort. Each step was roughly the same size as I, as I was. As we descended, I saw that there were no doors that led to the second or third floor. Okay, we're here. The hedgehog stood in front of a classroom and turned to face me. Isn't this the clothing room? Yeah, this is the tailor shop. Hedgehog pointed to a tiny door like the one on the fourth floor. Next to it was a sign that said, Taylor, we make clothes. Now come in, come in. Encouraged by the hedgehog, I went inside. Inside the clothing room, clothes big and small were strung around the place. There was an abundance of such. Ab I can't say it. From doll size to huge clothes. Who are these clothes for? And they nearly reached the ceiling. Surely there was something here that I could wear. Ladder hung down to the floor from the workbench. Over here, Alice. Hedgehog made his way through the forest of clothes and easily climbed the ladder. Followed him up. You're late. Where have you been? Loafing around? About. When we made it to the top, I ducked my head at the sound of a very intense voice shouting at us. You know that I don't have enough needles unless you're here. Patterned paper lay atop the fabric covered, covering the desk. In front of it stood a man with hands on its hips. Held himself with giant making marking pens in his hands, though to a normal sized human days, they would have seemed small. His face, I can't really see it. It was buried underneath an excessive amount of uh, plaster bandages. Plaster master? I literally covered my forehead. Oh no, another weird person. I'm sorry, master. At this, the hedgehog ran towards the plaster master. His body began to shake. The needles covering his body stood up at an end. The plaster master pulled out several of the needles and began to pin the pattern paper to the fabric. Well, I'm shrunk right now, so I guess it's hard for me to say what's normal anymore. And it's not good to expect strangers to be normal. So I tried to reassure myself the plaster master's eye caught met my own. Hmm. What? Who are you, miss? Oh, that's right, that's right. Hedgehog hopped up and stabbed the master's hand with his, with his needles. Ouch! Ah, oh, I'm sorry, master. You, you're always, always... 
I'm sorry, I'm sorry. But, but, never mind that. It's a customer. Maxwell looked like he was burning with rage, but when he looked at me, he took a deep breath and his anger seemed to subside. Welcome. What can I do for you? He sounds like a sushi restaurant chef. I've only been to restaurants that serve sushi on conveyor belts, so... I would like some clothes. Clothes? I can make the best custom clothes for you. What are you looking for? Um... Hedgehog immediately cut in. Master, we already have her clothes. What are you talking about in your, in your sleep or something? I haven't taken any orders from this young lady. No, that's not it. She's Alice. Uh, Alice? The master's eyes buried beneath those uh, see, uh, plaster bandages lit up. I can't freaking say that word, honestly. That many bandages is ridiculous. I wonder how many he has stuck on him. What does he do with them when he takes the bath? Alice? The master staggered as if in shock. What? Um, no, I'm... Welcome home, our Alice. Overcome with emotion, the master spread his arm and rushed towards him. Ah! Without thinking, I ducked out of the way. I mean, it was purely in instinct. Oh! Oh! Carried by his movement and the master ran, master ran off the desk and dived to the floor. Ah! Master! Whoops! I'm sorry. It's quite all right. The master slowly climbed the steps again. Though his foot were unsteady, he smiled and forgave me. Oh, he looks strange, but he's a pretty nice person. But to meet the Alice. The master's face, though I could only see his eyes, was filled with emotion. Uh, um. It's hard to correct him when he's being so welcoming. Master, master, please bring Alice's clothes. The apprentice poked the master. Oh, that's right. All right, I'm gonna do go get the, them from storage. You sit right. You sit tight for now, Alice. Huh. Harry, please come help me. Okay. So his name's Harry. I don't think he ever introduced himself. Master got down from the desk, but Harry the Hedgehog and Toe, and they went through the door to the next room. Seems the clothing prep room is being used for storage. I'm not sure how, but it looks like I'm finally going to get some clothes. Good. I feel barely uneasy wearing just the scarf. So I just sit on the edge of the desk and wait for them. Been waiting for quite a while, but they are still not back yet. They're taking a long time. I wonder what they're doing. Are they in some kind of trouble? Perhaps there's something I can do to help. Feeling a little bo bored, I headed after them towards the storage room. When I got to the entrance, I could hear the master and his apprentice talking. That's bad. But once... No, the queen. If fly. Try to like, peek inside and saw the master and his apprentice bent over, huddled together. It looked like they were con consulting with each other about something. Excuse me. Ah! When I called out to them, the master screamed and jumped. Oh, so what's wrong? What's wrong with you? Nothing, nothing at all. His behavior was too suspicious for that to be true. I was wondering if I could help with anything. Nope, there's nothing you can help with. Nothing at all. Really? But... It's fine, it's fine. You just wait outside, Alice. We'll get it prepared for you right away, okay? He grabbed me by the shoulders and quickly pushed me outside. Master, I can't hold Carrie by myself. Please help me. The hedgehog's miserable voice came from inside. Sh sure. Master awkwardly walked back to him. What exactly is going on? Eventually, the two came out carrying a large white box. Thank you for waiting. 
Isn't this rather large? The box was about the size of a king-size mattress. At least that's how it looks from my current size. No, because these are Alice clothes, said the Master White. He instructed Harry to open the lid. There was a red outfit inside the box. Very stylish red, almost a deep scarlet. To the side, there was some white fabric and black shoes as well. I approached the Master and looked down at the clothes. This is definitely too big. It does look like a children's clothes, but it's still too big for me. Are you listening? There was no response. I looked up at the master to see him staring down at me. Ah, uh, no. It's not big. It's not big at all. The master shook his head from side to side. His nose was twitching, was twitching for some reason. Master, let's carry this to the fitting room. Alright, alright. As it is apprentice is urging, the master quickly began to carry away the box. The fitting room is set up in the corner of the home ec room. It's definitely too big. Despite my insistence, I was annoyed in the box of clues were pushed into the fitting room. The fitting room was normal human size, and Harry seemed to struggle to close the curtain. He gave me a pleasant smile before closing the curtain all the way. Oh yeah, this is definitely too big. Look down at the clothes inside the box. What other choice do I have? I just need to try them on and show them that they don't fit. Try to drag it out of the box. There's no way around it. This outfit is just too big. Maybe a three or four year old could wear this, but it's still too big for me. It looks like one piece dress. It looks like a one piece dress. Sorry. When I saw what was underneath the clothes, I started to get flustered. I wonder where. Why did they prepare this for me, too? It's like they knew I'm completely naked. Not grateful, but it's a little scary. With some more reluctance, I tried putting my arm through the sleeve. I didn't think anything of it, of course. The sleeve alone looked like a corner covered by a tire body was so far from me in the right sides. But when I put my arm through, the once baggy sleeve shook down as it was lashing onto my arm. Huh? What? What is this? What's happening? My my arm. Ugh, sorry, my throat started to work. One by one, each article of clothing I tried on shook me down to all it fit me practically in the end. I can't understand it all, but I'm tired of thinking and questioning how or why. And even if I do think about it, I doubt the answer could be found in my mind. This wood world is probably a lot more bizarre than I imagined. As I slowly began to accept the wonders of this world, I started to hear whispers again. I overheard secret conversations surprisingly often. I overhear secret conversations surprisingly often, sorry. I'm here. Just one should be the smell I hit cat well the best taste. Be okay. I wonder what they have been talking about this whole time. How's everything, Alice? Uh, since I was eavesdropping, I'm making you the most like those are being called that. Yes, I mean no. Just wait a little bit more. I took off the clothes that I had put on halfway. Could it be that th this will also? Thinking about that, I tried on the underwear and it immediately shot down to fit me. Huh, this actually might be pretty clean yet. Feeling grateful, I put on the clothes that had been laid out for me. The shoes, the other articles of clothing, sparked to fit me perfectly. I took a look at myself. I took a look at myself in the mirror. It was a scarlet apron dress. Oh, that's cute. The clothes were like something out of a fairy tale. A fur. Ugh. Sorry, Bella. I threw my eyebrows at my reflection. That was just a cute idea, a little embarrassing. It was more like a costume than an outfit. Oh, this are you ready? From the other side of the curtain, you can hear his voice. 
I guess it can't be helped. I'm not a physician to comment on the designs, so I just need to be grateful that I have clothes to wear. Yes? I replied in the curtain open. Oh, it looks great, it looks great. Harry bounded over toward me and fixed the ribbon on my apron. Yes, indeed, this is how I should look. Said the master in a strangely joyful voice, and his cheeks softened. It's not weird. Asked fearfully, but the master shook his head. Not at all. In fact, you're not wearing that outfit. That's what. No, that's weird. Hmm. I don't really understand, but thank you. It's a little embarrassing, but I felt a little relieved after being complimented. Um. So, what about payment? Harry had said payment wasn't necessary, but of course that wouldn't do. The fabric and tailing was very high quality. If I had bought this dress, I think if I had bought this dress, I think it would have been quite expensive. I couldn't imagine how much the shrinking would cost, though. Ah, uh, about that. We don't need any payment. Harry forced himself apart, pushing the stammering pastor master to the side. He rubbed his tiny arms together. We don't need any payment, but we still thought we could have one. One, one, one. I don't really have anything on me. Oh, stop, of course you do. Harry excitedly waved his arms about. You say so, what would you like? Your arm. What? What? Your arm, please give us one. Very smiled as he made the unbelievable request. Huh? You have two of them, so just one should be fine, right? She said that Harry grabbed my right arm. My arm? Well, what do you mean? My arm. What are you going to do with my arm? I couldn't quite progress what was happening. What do they mean? They want my arm. Stop joking around, Alice. We're gonna eat it, of course. Eat it? You're kidding, right? But I could tell from the look in their gleaming eyes that they weren't joking at all. It, my arm doesn't taste good. It definitely won't taste good. I shook my head so fiercely, it felt like it would fly off. What are you talking about, Alice? Of course it'll be delicious. You smell really good. Nose had been twitching the whole this whole time. Has he been smelling me? Alice, meat is sweet. It melts in your mouth. Such a rare one of a kind delicacy. Wondered the master if he were in a supper. Drool ran down the corners of his mouth. Those, these people, they're serious. I, I'm going to be eating. No. Tried to run away, but the master tackled me to the floor. My chin hit the floor hard with a loud bam. It's okay, Alice. It'll be over quick. Master, please hold her here and quit, okay? I heard the sharp sound of rubbing metal. Oh, God. The hedgehog was holding giant pruning shears. No, no, no. Not my arm. Not my arm. Oh, so your leg did? Not my leg either. Not anything. Stop moving, Alice. It'll hurt more if you keep squirming going to hurt either way. This is mean. I thought you guys were nice. After hearing my score from our curry become flustered and start shaking his head. But we love you, Alice. Then why are you doing this? Because you know what they say, we love you so much, we could just eat you up. That's just a figure of speech. We're not actually supposed to eat if you want. Uh, and how about just one finger apiece? The plaster master claimed man has a silly new disagreement. No, you can't. Alex, don't worry. We'll, we'll eat it all and not leave, leave a single thing. That's not what I'm worried about. Look, look, master. You need to hold down her hand, okay? I was overpowered. My body was pushed down and my arms were being pressed against the floor. I felt the edge of the pruning chairs against my shoulder. This can't be happening. Okay, I'm gonna freak out. My face turned pale. 
felt like I would pa I would pass out. But if I passed out, I would definitely lose my eyes. Okay, here I go. Close my eyes and. Scream out loud. I just scream out loud. No! Someone come and help me. No! So, whose scream was that just now? It wasn't mine. Possibly opened my eyes. And there stood the master with two yellow flowers sprouting from his head. So he pins dark ready the plastic flowers were stabbed into the master's head. Behind him was a giant smiling face. Cheshire Cat. Yeah, I know I should say that. What are you doing? Cheshire Cat said as he stabbed another slowly pin into the master's head. The master let out a small scream as another flower was forcibly played into his head. Oh my gosh, this is so freaking violent. I did not realize that when I went to play it. Oh, it isn't the cat. If it isn't the cat. The master smiled and a hint of fear. If you tease Alice too much, I'll eat you. Ah! This time a blue flower sprouted from a new sewing pin lodged in the master's head. Oh, no, I know, I know that. The master frantically let me free. Alright, time for work. Time for work. Let's go, Harry. Shut the master now. Who was now in full bloom as he dragged Harry by the nape of his neck. Aw, oh, Master, I don't wanna. Master dragged Harry away to fight his lines. I wanna eat Alice, and Harry he climbed up the stairs to the desk. No matter, I watched them go up. As always, all I could see was his grinning mouth. As I looked at the giant mouth, tears started streaming on my face. Is this person planning to eat me too? Is he gonna open his mouth out, big mouth, and swallow me whole? I started to whimper. I don't taste good. The Cheshire Cat shook his head slightly. Alice is delicious. No, I'm not. So don't eat me, okay? I won't eat you, Alice. I looked at his giant smiling face. I can't see his eyes, so it's hard to see if he's telling the truth or not. Really? Is In that case, you look delicious, though. I can't lower my guard around him. So you're not, so you got close. The treasure cat said that was good and poked at the ribbon of my apron. apron was starting to come loose to fix it. No, yeah, let's, let's chase the white rabbit. No, I don't want to. Quickly looked away. Everyone loves you so much, Alice, if you're all alone, the Cheshire Cat purred loudly, you'll be eaten. I don't want that. I don't want to be loved like I'm food, not one bit. I'll go, I'll go with you. I decided to react my previous statement. You're, you're a good girl, Alice. Satisfied, the Cheshire Cat nodded and picked me up in his hand. As I let him lead me, I muttered in a defeated tone. Like I keep telling you, I'm not Alice. But how are we going to find him? Where did the rabbit run off to? In the treasure cat's armed. I looked up at his green face. Who knows? Who knows? Then there's no way to start looking for him. All in romance. Romance. Renets? I cannot say that word. Renets of Robert, Robert's memories. I'm sorry, I don't know what you're talking about. What do you mean? There are there are remets of memory scattered across his beaten path. His explanation was just left me more confused. That's fine. I'll put that aside for now. Basically, we just need to look for the lost rabbit. Um, it'd be nice if we had some carrots. Carrots? The Cheshire Cat parroted. 
Judging from his reaction, he seemed like he wasn't sure what a carrot was. We could use them as bait, can't we? He might come out when he's hungry. The right rabbit doesn't like carrots. Really? Don't rabbits normally love carrots? The right rabbit loves you, Alice. To eat? To eat, too. When did rabbits become carnivores? There's a strange thing. That's a strange thing to eat. I think eating human would make your stomach hurt. I suddenly realized something. Could it be that he's trying to use me as bait to lure out the rabbit? I don't want to get eaten, okay? Not an arm, not even a finger, okay? The Cheshire Cat nodded for. I won't do anything you don't want me to do, Alice. Is that true? I feel like he's already done a lot of things I didn't want him to do. I looked back at his grinny face with suspicion. Oh well, he did save me after all. I can at least return the favor by helping him look for the right rabbit. Rabbit, I guess we already have to look for it in the old fashioned way. I mumbled to no one in particular. What should we do? Ask the master and his apprentice survey our surroundings. I really don't want to go back to the master and apprentice after they tried to eat me. So I'm going to survey our surroundings. I started to survey my surroundings. It doesn't seem to be here in the clothing room. The Cheshire Cat and I decided to move on to the next room. The AV room should have been on the third floor, but for some reason it was, right ne was next to the clothing room. It was strange, but compared to everything else that happened so far, it wasn't that strange. Humans are known for adapting to their environment. The curtain was closed when I entered, and the room was dim inside. Red light from the sunset trickled in from between the thick curtains. The blackboard was covered by a ricked retraceable screen hanging from the ceiling. Retractable, sorry. Behind the desk, a, protractor, a projector was mounted on top of its stand. I wonder if someone left this out by accident and went home. The Jacquette set me down on the protector stand. It didn't seem like the right rabbit was in, the, in this classroom. Looks like the right rabbit isn't here either. I said as I casually flipped the projector switch. Well, it was dark and the screen was down. That's practically an invitation to flip the switch. The projector began to roll, and a video soon appeared on the screen. It looked like it was filmed in the city. A ride street and a tame sidewalk, trees lined up along the road. And lots of people were walking around. Huh, I've seen this before. I watched the video as it was beckoning to me. A white, stylish building. The entrance, automatic doors opened as people shoved in and out. Beneath their feet, a red mat was laid out. I could make out words written in gold lettering on the mat. Hotel Vern Heavy. Ah, I know this hotel. It's in the front of, a tra of the train station. I checked the video to be sure. Yes, there's no mistake in it. But why was this video filmed? It didn't seem like a particular informative video about much else. Among the thing of people basically coming and going, there was one person who stood still. Wait, is that a person? A blue button-up shirt and gray slacks and long white ears. It was the rabbit person I met in the classroom. Even in the video, he was blurred and transparent. Because of that, I couldn't make out his face. The the white figure squirmed a little, shimmered a little, slowly into the crowd and vanished in, into the hotel. At that moment, the projector clicked and the screen immediately went dark. The video stopped there. Did you see that just now? I tugged in the Cheshire Cat's robe. I saw. That was a rabbit, wasn't it? Indeed it was. It really was a rabbit? It wasn't, I wasn't hallucinating, hallucinating or imagining it. Hey, what? 
I was about to ask what the rabbit was, but I caught myself. The hooded, gritty man looked down at me. This treasure of catfellows gets weirder and weirder. What is it, Alice? <laughs> Sorry guys, my throat's starting to bug me. Thinking I should dress the mysterious person in front of me before I deal with the mysterious person in the video. What's a mysterious person? Someone suspicious. Like you. Are you a mysterious person, Alice? How rude. I'm no more. I tried to say I was normal, but the words wouldn't come. Normal? What is normal anymore? What I've shrunk down. Am I not normal? I scowled. After a few complimenting, yeah, compliment. Quickly waves my head and announced, "Normal." Yes. Oh. Oh no, guys. I've been going at this for a while. My battery died. Hey, there we go. Yeah, so what if I shrink? It's no big deal. If you live a long time, that kind of stuff is ha bound to happen. I'm normal. So is the grinning hooded man, and the talking hedgehog, and the bandage covered plaster master. Everyone is normal. Even that transparent rabbit who walks on two legs. Rabbit? A thought occurred to me as I looked up at the treasure cat. The rabbit, could it be? By chance, was the white rabbit you're looking Was the white rabbit you're looking for? There is no other right rabbit. I strongly disagreed with that option, but opinion, but there was no time for debate. That's right, so it's not just some small animal. In that case, I can at least agree that it wasn't lured by carrots. Did Mr. Right Rabbit have business at the hotel? I flipped the switch to play the video again. Huh. But this time, only white noise appealed, and the, and the, vo the video refused to play. That's weird. And I know for a fact that the hotel in front of the train that was the hotel in front of the train station. Do you want to try going to the hotel? I cautiously proposed to the treasure cat. She would say, since we found a clue, don't worry, I can take it from here. The treasure cat grinned, and instead of fulfilling my hope, he picked me up. I guess I'm going with him after all. After opening the curtain and locking the window, it opened so easily I was almost disappointed. Carried by the Cheshire Cat, I finally managed to escape the school. Chapter 2 The Hotel of Matter and Noise, Born in the Louvre. And with that, I am going to stop. I am going to save this right here. Save that one. And so, if you like this, please leave a like, comment if you wish, and so for more. If you guys like it, I'll continue from where I left off. But we completed really chapter one, so I'm done, people. Well, I'm out, people. Bye. My voice is so gone right now.